Alex, most people today have heard of the Big Bang, this explosion that so-called started the universe. But I don't think very many people really appreciate, A, what that means, or B, all the complexity that one has to think about when you say a Big Bang. That's not enough. It's a lot of other stuff you got to do. So I really come to you to begin to understand what do we mean by a Big Bang? Uh, well, uh, that's a very good question, because for a long time, physicists themselves didn't really have much to say about this. The Big Bang cosmology, uh, the theory of the Big Bang, started in the 1920s mm -hmm. with the work of Friedman in Russia, and then it was developed uh, a great deal in, in great detail. However... Uh, because Einstein had his original equations, but he thought there was a static universe that was a steady state, right? Right. Einstein, of course, made the first tremendous step where he applied his theory to the universe as a whole. Mm -hmm. And he realized that the universe, that the space can be closed. Uh, ho however, he assumed that the universe is static, because everybody believed that the universe <laughs> is static. Uh, uh, okay, but uh, Friedman um, realized that uh, the universe could expand, uh, and people studied the ex physics of the expanding universe and so forth. And however, and it all, all starts at a singularity. These uh, solutions describing solutions of Einstein's equations describing an expanding universe. Uh, if you follow them back in time, uh, you reach a moment where the density becomes infinitely high, temperature becomes infinitely high. So you cannot continue your equations any further. You call the Big Bang. But all you can say that the mathematics of this theory breaks down. Because you can't have really infinite. It's called that's the right. singularity because it's infinite, but that, that sort of doesn't seem to make sense to go to infinite uh, density and infinite temperature. That's true. So it wasn't really clear what happened at the Big Bang and what uh, physicists were actually doing was describing the aftermath of the Big Bang. Mm. And that was understood very well. But what actually happened at the Bang wasn't clear. And uh, the first uh, plausible answer to this is given in the theory of inflation developed by Alan Guth and others. Uh, so inflation actually is the theory of the bang, of the big bang. Um, how, how does that work, uh, briefly? Uh, inflation is an extremely fast accelerated expansion of the universe. And it is driven by a very peculiar form of matter, which is called false vacuum. Uh, the most peculiar thing about it is uh, that it, ha it, it is a very dense material. Uh, its uh, cubic centimeter has mass, at least the mass of the moon, and uh, <laughs> probably much higher. Um, All compacted in a cubic centimeter. <laughs> that's right. Um, but the most peculiar property of this thing is that it has strong repulsive gravity. Mm. So gravitational force is repulsive. And this is what causes the universe expand at a staggering rate. Uh, and since this force persists, the universe expands faster and faster. So it gets oh. huge in a tiny uh, interval of time. So if the force persists, and it doubles rapidly and keeps doubling, I mean, it's, it could be gigantic in a very short period of time. That's right. That's why it's called inflation, basically, because it is like economic inflation, where, suppose, at the constant rate of inflation, the prices would double every, yeah. say, five years. Right. And here, the size of the universe doubles, but it doubles every tiny fraction of a second. Right. <laughs> so uh, this false vacuum eventually decays. It is unstable. And its energy turns into a hot fireball of elementary particles and radiation. Uh, from that point on, gravity uh, of the particles is normal. It is attractive gravity, but uh, this fireball expands by inertia, basically, because it was expanding so fast to begin with. And the end of inflation and the creation of the fireball is what we call the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. Now, is it clear uh, what causes the end of inflation? Because with such power and this false vacuum, why, why doesn't it just continue to go and just blow everything apart? I mean, it must be something that starts it and something that ends it. <laughs> uh, what causes the end, of, uh, in, the end of inflation is a probabilistic quantum mechanical 
process. It is somewhat similar to radioactive decay. Oh, uh -huh. So you cannot predict exactly when it's going to happen, but you can tell that it's going to happen sooner or later, and, and sooner rather than later. Uh -huh. In fact, because it is a probabilistic process, it doesn't happen everywhere at once. In our neighborhood, uh, inflation ended and the Big Bang occurred some 14 billion years ago. But in other parts of the universe, inflation still continues. This is, um, this is uh, parts of the universe beyond our ability to, to ever see. Right, beyond our horizon. Right, because we're limited by the speed of light. So right. whatever we can see, light has had, has had to have time to travel from that place to us. And if this is beyond that, there's no hope of ever seeing that. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so, so inflation probabilistically decays in our neighborhood, and that, that ends it at least here. Right. Okay, so how then do we go from uh, the um, concept of, of, of inflation beginning and ending to the Big Bang, and then, and then the normal, the normal uh, uh, physics of the Big Bang take over. That, that's, you know, as any, if this can, any of this can be normal, it's, all of it sounds so strange. But, any, yeah. it, but, but as it's normal, then th that continues. Well, the, what we call the Big Bang is just the uh, moment when the energy of this false vacuum, this stuff that drives the inflation, goes into this hot fireball. Okay, right. And... Uh, that's the Big Bang. That's like an explosion. Right. This tremendous energy is released. And uh, from then on, uh, this fireball just expands by, by inertia. And this is uh, uh, the, gal the expansion of the universe that we see today is just the consequence of this force of this initial explosion. Okay. Okay. Um, what can we then say about um, the uh, process of... Um, inflation itself during it. Uh, it, it. It's this constant force of energy that's doubling, uh, but is it, um, uh, if it ends in one place, uh, what, what may happen in other regions? Because the inflation has made the universe much bigger than what we can see. H how do we define regions? You see, th there are two competing processes of inflation. One, one is the uh, decay of the false vacuum, right, mm -hmm. which uh, ends inflation. And the other is uh, this expansion, which is multiplication of these inflating regions. And basically, the question is what, uh, which, process, which of the two processes prevails. Mm. If, expans if multiplication is more efficient, then these inflating regions uh, multiply faster than they decay and more and more universe is inflating, even though the decay goes on all the time. And this is actually what analysis shows, that uh, most of the universe is in the state of inflation. Uh, and occasional regions uh, fall out of inflation, and uh, those regions are like ours. They're like islands in this inflating sea of uh, the false vacuum. Uh, these islands, once they, they are formed, uh, very tiny. Inflation, inflation ends in a very small region. Uh, these, these regions start expanding very fast, but they typically do not merge because the space between them expands even faster because of inflation, and that makes room for more uh, inflating re these islands, or what they're called pocket universes, <laughs> to form. Huh. And, and so... When we see our piece here that we think is everything, and we're wor worried about how we begin our universe, that may be a very small part of the whole picture. That's right. Even though we can never travel to these other uh, pocket, pockets or islands uh, in, in, in this inflating universe. So f in that sense, we live in an isolated universe because we cannot get out of it. We cannot even observe these other universes, but they belong to the same space-time. So in, this, in that sense, they are parts of the same universe. It's easy to confuse the expansion of space with the speed of light, the expansion of space being potentially enormously faster than the speed of light. How, how is well, that? Well, uh, one way to picture it is uh, if you imagine... Um, uh, say, a, a piece of rubber. 
right? And uh, you are stretching it, and this is like space expanding. Uh -huh. Then you take two points, two marks on this piece of rubber, and this will be, this will be two galaxies. The distance between them grows. Now, if I take these two galaxies, uh, two points at a greater distance, the distance between them will grow faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I take the distance large enough, the separation speed will be faster than the speed of light. And that will not contradict uh, the theory of relativity. What theory of relativity says is that uh, any ma no material object can outrun a signal of light. So if I run and uh, parallel to a light signal, I cannot catch up with it. <laughs> the light signal always wins. But if you have two objects and the space between them expands, so that the distance between them grows, there is no limit on how fast that can happen. Literally no limit. No limit. And that's why in inflation, there was this absolutely incredible expansion of the universe. That's right. And that doesn't contradict anything that, any known laws of physics. Right.